This is one of the most useful biblical interpretation models that I have run into in a great number of years, and it's called Pardis. And I am not borrowing, but I am straight reading from the Jewish New Testament commentary by David H. Stern, page 11 and 12. We must understand the four basic modes of scripture interpretation used by the rabbis. They are, number one, pishat, simple. The plain, literal sense of the text, more or less what modern scholars mean by grammatical historical exegesis, which looks to the grammar of the language and the historical setting as background for deciding what a passage means. Modern scholars often consider grammatical historical exegesis the only valid way to deal with the text. And pastors who use other approaches in their sermons usually feel defensive about it before academics. But rabbis have three other modes of interpreting scripture. And their validity should not be excluded in advance, but related to the validity of their implied presuppositions. Number two, remez, which is hint, wherein a word, phrase, or other element in the text hints at a truth not conveyed by the Peshat. The implied presupposition is that God can hint at things of which the Bible writers themselves were unaware. Number three, drash or madrash, search. An allegorical or homiletical application of a text. This is a species of eisegesis, reading one's own thoughts into the text, as opposed to exegesis, which is extracting from the text what it actually says. The implied presupposition is that the words of Scripture can legitimately become grist for the mill of human intellect, which God can guide to truths not directly related to the text at all. Number four, sowed, the secret. Sowed, sod. A mystical or hidden meaning arrived at by operating on the numerical values of the Hebrew letters, noting unusual spellings, transposing letters, and the like. For example, two words, the numerical equivalents of whose letter letters add up to the same amount are good candidates for revealing a secret. Through what Arthur Kessler in his book on the inventive mind calls the bisociation of ideas, the implied presupposition is that God invests meaning in the minutest details of scripture, even the individual letters. So the presuppositions underlying Remez, Drash, and so obviously express God's omnipotence, but they also express his love for humanity in the sense that he chooses out of love to use extraordinary means for reaching people's hearts and minds. At the same time, it is easy to see how Remez, Drash, and Sod can be abused since they all allow, indeed require, subjective interpretation. And this explains why scholars who deal with the objective world, hesitate to use them. These four methods of working a text are remembered by the Hebrew word pardes, an acronym formed from the initials. It means orchard or garden.